Teachers of Reddit, how easy it to tell if a student has a crush on another? And what is the funniest, saddest moment between the two you can share? Story 1. Band in high school is a funny place. Since kids are around each other a lot more of the time than the average student, they tend to get band goggles. It's pretty obvious to see relationships blossoming. More often than not, it is a good thing, but every now and then, you get the older upperclassmen boys going after naive freshman girls. And boy oh boy does it turn ugly quick. The drama can be outrageous. Tilda Tilda. Funniest Tilda Tilda. Most shocking moment. A girl who is an awesome student has been dating a true player on and off for the last year. She went so far to tell me that she got back together with him after he cheated on her. So literally last Friday, I'm sitting in the band hall watching kids practice. This sweet girl comes in the hall and is walking with a sense of purpose. As she passes me, she says something under her breath that I didn't quite get the first time. Confused by what she said, I watch her walk up to said guy. She grabs him by the shoulders and spins him around. She says something to which he responds with a short answer, but had that look on his face that he got caught doing something he wasn't supposed to be doing. She then balls up her fist and socks the guy four, five times and storms off. At that point, I realized what she said. See, Vanguard, you are going to have to write me an office referral. Best referral ever. Edit. Clarification. Edit two. ITT former and current promiscuous band nerds, which I hope are not my students. Story two. I teach English. I remember a star football player, senior, coming into the room to rap with me for a bit before third period started every Friday. In my third period, a female student, junior of mine who was extremely intelligent and very pretty, yet somewhat shy being an AP student and all, was sitting in the front row and always stared at him when he came in. He would talk about football and stuff with me and every so often I'd look back at her, still staring right at him and smiling the entire time. She would not turn that smile off no matter who was looking or what anyone said. It was actually one of the cutest, saddest things I ever saw, seeing as how the guy never even turned around to notice her. If he did, who knows, maybe they would have hit it off. Maybe they did after they weren't my students. Story 3. It is painfully obvious most of the time. Here are some of the things I saw. Continuous glances at the same person. Body language that positions the person closer to the other person. Interjecting into a conversation that the person was not engaged in to begin with. Being helpful. More so for a person than for anyone else in class. Flirting, obviously. Boastful storytelling. A lot of times it is outlandish and very obviously untrue. Hanging around the other person uninvited and checking out the other person while oblivious to their surroundings. What is funny is that most people think they are being sneaky or inconspicuous. From my vintage point in the front of the classroom, these things seemed so obvious as to be genuinely painful to observe. It was especially painful when the feelings were intentionally unreciprocated. I taught college for a bit. Edit. Formatting was wonky. Edit 2. I said vintage, it should have been vantage, but the wine reference below was just too good to change my post. Story 4. I'm not a teacher, but in 6th grade, 2002, a girl in my class, history with Mrs. Thompson sat in the next row over from me every day. I was crushing on another girl and ignorant to the fact that she liked me. Midwinter, Mrs. Thompson is handing back papers and stops between the two of us while glancing back and forth between the two of us and says something along the lines of, I don't know who to give this paper back to, her first name, or Mr. My last name, Mrs. Thompson hands the paper back to her. She had been practicing writing her name with my last name so much in her notebook, apparently like many teenage girls do, that she had accidentally written it on homework she handed in. Six years later at my high school graduation, a half dozen of my former teachers, including Mrs. Thompson, were sitting around talking with my friends and me and brought up that paper where a girl had written my last name on her paper. They found it cute and endearing and told other various stories of middle school love. A year and a half ago, I married that girl. TLDR, my wife is omniscient. Don't tell her I said that. Story 5. College perspective. I can usually tell which of my students have hooked up. I can almost always tell when girls are crushing on guys in my classes. It's usually painfully obvious, especially from the perspective of the front of the room. I can also tell that you're texting, no matter how much you work to camouflage it. Sometimes, when I assign group work of any kind, I like to intentionally split up or subvert the secret lovebirds just to see how they react. I'm a bit of a sadist like that. Oh, freshman. All pheromones, alcohol, s, all overconfidence, and a complete lack of experience with the real world. Such fun! Edit. Just found this guy slash you slash college math chef below. I can definitely tell, and I always sit the awkward shy ones with their crushes. Some would call me a guardian angel. It's like I'm his evil doppelganger or something. Story 6. I work in a college and teach early morning classes to 17, 24-year-olds, mostly. It is painfully obvious who just did a walk of shame to class and occasionally who is alarming someone else in the room. 
The most awkward thing that ever happened was some guy who came into the class and interrupted a lecture to hit on a girl in the front row. He wasn't even a student, just some who walked by our open campus and recognized the girl through the window as the girl who he saw at Jack in the Box a week earlier. Edit. More details on the second story. He comes in and just starts talking to her. I am in such shock that this guy just randomly walked in. I was speechless and just stood there watching it. After about a minute, I came to my senses and realized the situation. Here is this 40-plus-year-old dude, tatted up with his pants hanging from his butt, reeking of booze and cigarettes at 9 a.m., hitting on a very uncomfortable-looking tiny blonde 18-year-old. I tell him that this is my classroom and that I wouldn't have him interrupting. He would have to go. He didn't put up a fight, just asked when class was over so he could come back to mack him some. I told him we were out at noon. We were really done by 10, and that was the last day of class. The day of the final, a week later in a different room, I kept my eyes open, but he never showed. I asked the student, but she only knew him from a single instance of standing in line in front of him at Jack in the Box. Story 7. This actually happened in my acting class just today. Our teacher said he had an exercise to show us how much subtext there is under the surface of our actions. Pick a person in here who you have something you desperately want to say something to and never could. Think about it really hard and don't make eye contact with them or they'll know. Everyone in the class knows each other very well. There is a lot of dirt to stir up. The silence was deep and uncomfortable. Now. Go ahead and say it. You could hear the assholes pucker. People looked numb with fear and hesitation. The teacher, having proved his point about rich subtext, opened his mouth to end the exercise before anyone could actually speak. Now, just then, a kid jumped up from his chair arduously and let loose with, Sadie, you're hot as hell, and I want to alarms your brains out. The room exploded. Edit. The end of the story. The result was pandemonium. One kid was laughing so hard he nearly tipped his desk right over onto the floor. The teacher was in shock. The kid was red in the face and laughing uneasily. The amazing thing was the girl. She didn't smile, didn't acknowledge it, nothing. She sat there, stock still, like Marie Antoinette at the guillotine, totally above the situation. I think she must have been mortified and didn't know what to do. The teacher's response. I have been doing that exercise for decades, and no one has ever actually said anything. Edit. The next day, I stuff you not, Reddit. Saw this kid and Sadie walk in today, a little apart, both grinning. He was listening to a song on her iPod. They both fell asleep in class. Great success! Story 8. Teacher of high school freshman here. It's very easy. Saddest story? Two houses both alike, sorry. It was a couple years ago. Girl was quiet, charming, and very bright. Boy was disruptive, but the good kind of disruptive. The pleasure to have in class disruptive. Very funny. It became very clear to me that she was crushing on him something fierce. I, for what it was worth, blessed this potential union. This went on for several months. Then, one day, she storms into my room in a huff, declaring her anger at him. As I'm going around the room later that day, I catch him writing a lengthy letter to her. At a glance, it explained how he thought she was a really nice girl and all, but it would be perhaps best if they remained only friends. I assume she had made a move. It didn't pay off. Over the next few days, I saw more mournful and longing looks than I ever wanted. Each one broke my heart. By the end of the year, they had patched it up. Yet I still caught the occasional twinge of sadness in her eye. She may still hope to this day, and I, I still hope too. Story 9. I teach kindergarten. Yes, they get crushes too. They're completely incapable of hiding them because they haven't yet learned shame. I had a class with six girls and only one boy. One of the girls always played with the boy. Their moms are good friends, so they also do many things together outside of school. At lunch, the girl would talk about how many times she had kissed the boy at soccer practice and how they were going to get married. It was absolutely adorable. Then one day I got a new student, another boy. I can't even tell you how excited my first little guy was to finally have another boy to play with. He expected the new boy would feel the same way and immediately want to be his best friend. Unfortunately for him, the new boy wanted to be friends with everyone, including the girls. Not only did my original boy have to share his new friend, but his little girlfriend started flirting hardcore with the new boy and forgot about him almost completely. He started getting madder and madder! I had to work very hard during playtime to make sure he didn't feel left out. It was a very hard time for him. Luckily, the new boy was only around for a short time. Everything went back to normal when he left. Story 10. This is one of my most treasured memories as a teacher. I was a student teacher, so I was not prepared for this. I asked my students to write and share their own poetry. We focused on sensory imagery, and I had the presentation staged at the local university for a bit more gravitas. Some were funny, some were surprisingly beautiful, but most were banal, and the exercise was mostly boring. This one girl got up in front of the class visibly shaking. She was near tears for her entire poem. I wanted to help her, but I had no idea what to do, so 
I just watched like everyone else as she poured her heart out to a boy in the class who did not reciprocate. When she finished, there was a silence in the room. And after a few seconds, which seemed to stretch out forever, one of her friends stood up and ushered her out of class as the tears began to flow. Nobody made fun of her, but the boy also didn't show that he felt the same. It was just out there with no commentary. It is to this day one of the bravest acts I have ever witnessed. Story 11. Daycare teacher to kids 6. 11 here. It is probably one of the easiest things to pick up on. They try to play with the other, but they don't openly admit to it. They spend a lot of time near the other, without ever actually talking to them. They sit at the same table, but try to talk to different friends. Basically, they spend as much time with the other as possible, without actually becoming friends. If anything about crushes is mentioned, they immediately try to direct the conversation, so people talk about them and their crush. And the second the two are mentioned together, the crusher blushes. Not to brag, but... I have this 10-year-old that has a pretty obvious crush on me. I mean, I'm a teenage male who spends 20 hours a week with her, so it is entirely understandable. I should mention that I don't encourage it or anything. I treat her like all the others. Granted, she is one of the oldest, so she does have more responsibility and she is able to have deeper conversations. But she tries to make my life easy. She will help clean, cook, and take care of the younger kids. She does it to impress me and I sincerely appreciate it. I will say again that it is completely normal. I had crushes on babysitters, so do we all. I feel kind of bad for her now because she puts a lot into it, but I know she'll smile looking back on it as an adult. There is another kid who is six, maybe seven now, who has a crush on one of the nine-year-olds. I mean, they are not entirely on the same level and mentally. First grade and third grade are about as far apart as third grade and ninth grade, night and day. So it is kind of sad because he is chasing after her. She knows, I think, about the crush and it makes her a little uncomfortable, but... She is sweet about it. Story 12. I teach 10th graders. When I was student teaching at age 21, I was really well liked. And the students told me a lot of personal stuff. Probably because my age made me more approachable to 15, 16 year olds. One girl C would spend her study hall in my classroom during my planning period, along with about five other students who just wanted to get out of study hall. She told me that she liked a boy S, who also hung out in my classroom at that time. From then on, I used to group them together in class on purpose to get her to talk to him and give them an opportunity to spend some time together. I would always encourage her to ask him to hang out or tell her about things he was interested in so she could start conversations with him about it. She loved him. I think he saw her as a friend but was generally clueless about her feelings. The saddest moment between the two of them was during my planning period, their study hall. Some of the other kids that hung out in my room during that time were off running errands for me, so it was just C, S, and I in the classroom. C was a pretty overweight girl, and she was sitting on the desk part of those dumb classroom desks, and the desk completely gave out, breaking and sending her falling to the ground. I immediately shooed S out of the room, sending him to get the maintenance guy to get the desk out. When S was gone, C started bawling and was absolutely mortified. I knew she would be, which is why I sent S away quickly. I talked her through her embarrassment, and by the time S got back, C was cool as an alarming cucumber and totally brushed it off. We went back to normal conversation, and I'm sure S forgot about it within minutes. My student teaching ended about a month later, so I'm not sure if anything became of C and S, but I definitely still think about them sometimes. Edit. Wow, thanks guys for the kind words and the gold. I kind of expected this to get buried, haha. Huh? Anyway, I'd like to think I was just doing what any teacher would do in that situation, but I know that there is an unfortunate number of teachers who wouldn't have responded the same way I did. I just remember what it was like to be 15 years old, and I've had a few teachers who treated me as kindly as I treated C, so I'm just paying it forward and doing my job. Story 13. This seems like the right story to share for this question. My older brother and his crush were both involved in theater productions in high school. On the first production they were involved in, their characters shared a kissing scene. It was high school, so it was a pretty big deal that they had to kiss. Cue lots of teasing, flirting, etc. However, nothing came of it. For an entire year. The next year, they were both involved in the production again, building the set. The drama teacher saw them every day flirting and becoming quite good friends, but never taking that extra step to become official. So she set them up on a surprise date. She told them she was taking the set design crew out for dinner, met them at the restaurant, then said, well, no one else showed up, and I've got other places to be. Here's some cash. Have a great night, and left the restaurant. So my brother and his crush finally had their first date, and now they are married. Story 14. Miguel asked me, the AP chem teacher, if he could write a message on the board for Mariella. Miguel was a former AP student and at that time a senior. Mariella was a current AP student and at the time a junior. Miguel, using elements from the periodic table, asked Mariella to go to the senior banquet, the biggest to do at our school. And then Miguel asked if I would record it on my phone while he asks her. 
I said sure thing and I was glad to help. Both were great people and good students. Miguel, during class, goes into this big long show asking Mariella. After he's done, Mariella stands up, looks straight at the phone and says, No. She then sat back down. Before this started, I thought there was no way Miguel would endure public humiliation, unless he knew for sure Mariella would say yes. As soon as she said no, there was nothing but silence. Miguel literally dropped his head and slinked out of the room. Mariella didn't flinch. I pass away laughing every time I watch that video. Greatest moment of my teaching career. Eat it. There have been numerous requests for the video. Unfortunately, I can't upload the video because they are minors, and it would be posted without any permission. Believe me, I weighed the value of funny V. Legal and funny dang near one. But in the end, I do enjoy teaching, so I would like to keep my job. Sorry. Story 15. Eighth grade teacher here. That's right. The year hormones go absolutely haywire. But sometimes in cute way. I teach a literacy block, and part of that time is spent silently reading while I do one-on-one -on -one reading conferences with the kids. During this time, kids can move about the room, so to speak. I have double-sized room with a couple of couches and a ton of pillows, and two particular students sat next to each other. These students are dating. Anyway, about five minutes into our sustained, silent reading, it was absolutely still and silent. One of those students, boy, suddenly stood up and repositioned himself on the opposite side of his girlfriend. I noticed but didn't say a word and continued my reading conference. A few minutes later, I snuck a peek and he had reached over to clasp her left hand in his. They stayed like that for the rest of the time. Both reading, she's reading asterisk. The fault in our stars asterisk, and he's reading asterisk. The name of the wind. Their reading tastes are part of why I love them so. P.S. He had to change sides to hold her hand because she was born without a right arm. Amniotic band syndrome, I think. I know, right? Edited to add, to all the comments asking, how did she hold the book with one hand? Um, have you never read a book with, like, say, a soda in your hand? Or a Kit Kat? Come on. Plus, she's been compensating her whole life, 13 years, for the missing limb. FYI. She is beyond brilliant, completely joyful, and is the most fabulously confident girl I've ever taught. Edited again for you logic-minded folks that are still twisting over this. Okay. Picture them. They are sitting on the floor, leaning against some pillows. Side by side, backs to a wall. Her left hand is in his right hand. She has her legs bent. Another pillow is propping up her book. Hardcover. Stays open by itself on her lap. As needed, she raises up their paired hands to turn the page. He does the same. The book is in her lap, folks. Her lap. I do understand your initial confusion, though I do. Story 16. Story time. I had a massive crush on this girl in ninth grade. Like head over heels in love. My 14-year-old brain was convinced that this girl and I were going to get married one day. I'd walk with her to all of her classes, I'd write her stupid little love notes, and I'd occasionally hang out with her at her house. We had one class together, biology, and it was evident by my grade in the class how much I was distracted by her. I spent most of the class relentlessly flirting with her. About halfway through the term, my biology teacher kicks me out of the class for what seems like the dozenth time for being distracting. I, AI, flirting it up. As I was accustomed to this, I gathered my things and gave a sly smirk of affection towards said crush as I walked towards the door to the hallway. I sat down crisscrossed, thinking about how much my crush would like me now that I had been kicked out again for flirting with her. Right as I began fantasizing, my biology teacher suddenly appeared over me. I stood up immediately and she looked me directly in the eyes and said, It's very obvious that you like her, so why don't you stop being a chicken and ask her out? I stood there with an aghast expression on my face unsure of what to do or say. I finally mumbled out, sure thing, and she invited me back into the class. So yes, teachers probably do know, especially if you're head over heels. Story 17. I'm not a teacher, but I have a story that can contribute. I once had a crush on a girl in my class when I was 11. It was for my friends and her, but she didn't have a crush on me, very obvious. But my teacher didn't know, or at least that's what I thought. When we got new groups, our tables were set in groups, her new place was right behind me. So maybe that were the first signs that my teacher knew I liked the girl. On Valentine's Day, I gave the girl I liked a little teddy bear, and she put it on her table. When I needed to ask something to the teacher that day, she noticed the teddy bear on the table of my crush and asked me in front of my class if I had a crush on the girl. Needless to say, my face turned red, and a very silent yes came out of my mouth. So I think it's safe to say my teacher knew it from the beginning. Story 18. I teach at a Catholic private high school, and there is one couple that sticks out in my mind. Two weeks ago, they had favorites dance, and the girl had asked the guy out. This girl is very beautiful and transferred in around December. The boy is from a very well-known family in this area. Needless to say, they are loaded. Oh, and he is gay. So this stunning high school girl who is oblivious to the fact that the gentleman who she has been crushing on is very, very gay. 
He is a bit of a drama queen, but I adore him and he has a great heart. The day before the dance, they were about five feet from me when the girl had asked the young man if he was going to pick her up in his car. He laughed and said, Why don't we take our own cars? I live closer to the country club and don't want to worry about picking you up and getting lost to your place. She looked like he just kicked her in the shin. All right, that was a bit harsh. I told him if she was his date, then he should treat her well. The bell rang and he went to class. Monday morning rolls around and I see the young lady and asked her how the dance was. She looked up at me and started going off on how she was attacked in the parking lot that she was waiting at by a homeless woman. Apparently the young man and his brother did not save her, but instead ran into her car and all of them left screaming. She then proceeded to act like a Disney princess, crumble to the ground and sob about how bad her date was. Story 19. My mom teaches first grade and I went by her school a few weeks ago to drop off her lunch. Anyway, I got there and my mom smiles and makes a, watch this, gesture. So I look, there is a little girl blowing dandelion fuzz into the air and watching it fly away. She looks so happy and giggling like crazy. Finally, there's no more dandelions to blow fuzz from. She looks pretty sad about it. Then this little boy, all red-faced and shy, comes up to her holding out his hand and offers her one last huge dandelion. She looks so happy and kisses his cheek, takes the dandelion and twirls it around like it's a wand. The boy watches and claps. Finally, she's done, laughs and grabs the boy's hand and runs towards the swings. I asked my mom what that was all about. My mom had noticed the boy watching the girl, and it was clear he wanted to be friends. So my mom said next time she plays with the dandelions, apparently this girl did this a lot, to save her one. So sure enough, this little boy picked a fluffy dandelion and waited for his chance. Mom told me they are best friends now and they play with dandelions all the time. Little boy even said thank you to my mom for helping him. Story 20. I teach kindergarten. Happened last week. Student. Miss. Metal underscore lover 1012. I really do like Gracie a whole lot. But she said she don't want me as no boyfriend. It makes me really sad. He's almost in tears. Because I really do like her a lot. No one's ever going to like me for a boyfriend. I think I'm ugly. Me. Timmy. One day she's going to look back and realize she's missing out. Just hold your head high, baby, and don't let it upset you. You're one of the cutest little boys I've ever seen. I bet there are so many other girls in class that would love to be your girlfriend. Student. Miss. Metal underscore lover 1012. I wish I could marry you one day. You're my favoriteest teacher ever. He had a girlfriend by the end of the day. At this age, it's usually pretty well known who loves who. They are the absolutely sweetest. Story 21. I teach in a school that has an academic entrance exam. Halfway through last term, a girl came during term to sit the exam, wanting to join S3, age 14, 15. She sat the exam and then spent lunch hanging out with the other S3 pupils. I went past a classroom and had to stick my head in because a riot was happening. This girl, who was very pretty, was sitting in the middle of a crowd of basically every boy in the year, who were just clustered around her all trying to impress her. It was hilarious and extremely pathetic. I'm sure part of it was simply because she was someone new, but they weren't exactly being subtle. Of course I yelled at them and kicked them all out of the classroom.